<clears throat> Hi guys, Dr. B here. So this is your first lecture on waves. So what, <clears throat> excuse me, so what exactly is a wave? The official definition, if you will, it is a disturbance that carries energy from place to place. It doesn't carry matter per se, but what it does, it tends to disturb the matter that goes through it. So what causes a wave to occur? When an object vibrates, it causes movement either back and forth, up and down, in the, and it interacts, if you will, with the surrounding air molecules. So that vibration, that disturbance, carries energy, and that's the wave, from place to place and usually interacts with the surrounding air molecules. And we'll talk about different examples of waves, and it's based on certain characteristics they have. So two types of waves. So first of all, <clears throat> the medium is the substance or the material that carries the wave. So for example, if you have the news media, social media and all that, news moves through the media, but the media itself is not the news. So electromagnetic waves or EM waves do not need matter or they don't need a medium to be able to move, for example, through space. Mechanical waves, they must have a medium in order to move. They have to travel through something that carries it, and that is an, that's, the, that's how you would describe a mechanical wave. So there are two types, transverse and longitudinal. So a transverse wave is a wave in which the media moves at right angles to the direction of the wave. So parts of a transverse wave are the crest, the highest points, and the troughs, which are the lowest point. So some examples of transverse waves, ripples on the surface of water, waves on a string, or stadium or human wave. And when we're in class, I plan to show different videos, a lot of videos of different types of waves so you can kind of see what we're talking about. So you'll notice here a transverse wave versus a longitudinal wave. So how are they different? Well, the transverse wave it's like we said, it's moving at a right angle. The crest and the trough is moving at a right angle compared to the medium. Longitudinal, it's moving long ways, so to speak. So there are no real crest and troughs when you look at it at this particular angle. So a compressional or longitudinal wave, it moves in the medium back and forth. Think of a slinky. So later on, you're gonna have a slinky lab and you're gonna be able to enjoy that hopefully and don't destroy the slinkies in the process, boys. So two parts of longitudinal waves. The first one is the compression, where they come together, and rarefaction, where the particles spread apart. So when you saw that longitudinal wave, when they come together, compress. When they spread out, that's called a rarefaction. So some examples are sound waves, shock waves, ultrasound, and the vibration in a spring. So again, kind of describing what I said, um, longitudinal waves versus transverse waves. The longitudinal, there's the compressions kind of moving along, and then when it spreads out, that's the rarefaction. Surface waves, they're a combination of longitudinal and transverse waves. Surface waves, they usually travel more slowly, have larger amplitudes, and longer wavelengths than body waves. So amplitudes refers to the height of the wave, and the wavelength is a distance from, hopefully you should know this from chemistry, but a wavelength, the official definition of a wavelength is from two consecutive crests or two consecutive troughs. And that's the distance for a wave or the wavelength. Amplitude refers to the height. So electromagnetic waves, some of these you should be able to recognize. We talked about this a little bit when we talked about what causes a sunburn. So that was UV radiation. Um, we also talked about what causes us so what causes the warmth from the sun the hot feeling the hot is infrared and allows you to see the light that's the visible light so electromagnetic waves travel through space as its medium and you can tell as you go from looking at the relationship between energy and wavelength i think you should know again the shorter the wavelength the higher amount of energy the longer the wavelength, the lesser or lower amount of energy. And you can kind of see the relationship here, and we will get into this in more detail as you move on throughout the unit. So fluorescence under ultraviolet light 
you know, using a black light and ultraviolet light. So a part of that EM, those electromagnetic waves, this is what it looks like. So we'll talk about this uh, when we come back or we're, when I'm back in class. So wave properties, like I said, the wavelength is the distance between one point of a wave to the, the exact same place on the next wave. It's measured from crest to crest or trough to trough or also in the middle as well. So the frequency, how many waves go past a point in one second, the unit is Hertz, capital H, lowercase z. Increase the frequency, increase the energy wave. So the more often it goes past a certain point in one second, it has more energy. Amplitude, like I said, it, the height of it, it's how far the medium moves from the rest position where it is not moving. So from, let's say, here, here to here, right here, that is the amplitude. Remember for the transverse waves, the highest point is the crest and the lowest point is the trough. So the more energy you have, the higher the amplitude. So notice how there's a lot of relationship type of questions. So be mindful of those. Talking about longitudinal waves and there and some wave properties. <coughs> Just repeating myself a little bit, but it's okay. So in longitudinal compressional waves, when the medium comes together, that's the compression. When it's spread out, it's rarefaction. So in this type of wave, the closer together they get and the further apart they get over time, so to speak, that refers to a greater amplitude. So when you look at a transverse wave, it's the height from the, from the center point, if you will. From the compressional wave, it's how close they get and how further apart they get. That indicates amplitude. So wave speed, it depends on the medium in which the wave is traveling and it varies in solids, liquids, and gases. So wave speed, meters per second, equals wavelength, which is in meters, times the frequency, which is hertz. Because remember that frequency, or sorry, hertz, it is actually inverse seconds or one over seconds. So meters times one over seconds is meters per second. So that's a brief introduction into waves. We'll get into more detail. We're going to do some problem solving, uh, stuff like that. So if you have any questions, please let me know. Hit that like and subscribe.